Well, hello, man cavers. What are we doing today? We're going to do two things. I have got a couple more engines which have turned up. Uh, I bought these really as donor engines and, you know, a couple which I think might go again. But we'll take you outside and see. And then after we've done that, we are going to restore this little spark tester. Remember this little thing I found in that little tray what had that little tiny engine in? I come across this little spark tester. So we're going to strip this thing down, clean it up. But before then, I'm going to show you outside some engines that have just been dumped off. So before we get on with this, let's have a wander outside and you can see what we have is i know i know i know another mud anchor or two but we have this little lot here which has turned up we have a boat anchor here an old power hacksaw with the plug cut off another boat anchor here and a couple of peta a1s and for those of you that will think, hang on, this isn't an A1. No, you're right, it's a pet A. It's an early one because it's got the slightly different governor and the mag located in a different place. As somebody goes past. But, yeah, this engine is seized up. It does have a data plate on the top that I haven't seen before. So not only has it got its original brass ID plate on the side... It also has one on the top, and I ain't got a clue what it says, because I can't make any of it out. But there you go, we have that. We have a list of D, which is, uh, yeah, she's got the mag bracket off. Half the carver's missing. Ooh, there's a top in here, I believe. Ah, there you go. Oh, I didn't realise that was there. Till I just happened to look in that hopper. Well, look at that. Look what's in here as well. Mag shims, look. Oh, that one's a bit rusty, but we have mag shims in there. So there you go. We have another list of D. Ah, oh, it's nice that's got the top. There you go. Right, right. And then we've got this list of D. This one looks to me like a running engine. But, like the boy, it's been sitting for quite a few years in an old boy's shed. All of these had, and he wanted to get rid of the lot in one go. And I was like, yes, we'll give it a go then. But he said this has a spark, but he can't get it to start. And I said to him, are you familiar with the starting procedure of a list today? He said, not really, I've just cranked it and played with it and twisted knobs, and I can't get it going. Oh, that's the Amazon man. So, I have checked. It does have a spark. So I think what we're going to do is, we're going to fill this carb up with petrol. We've got a handle with this one. And we're going to see if it'll start. If it's got a spark and fuel, if the timing's right, it should start. You know, I did do some preliminary checks. That was bone dry of oil. So I have put a fresh litre of oil, I've emptied the rest of the old oil out, what was in there, and I have put fresh oil in, but that is literally all I've done. Also what come with the lot was this list of D. So we've got a list of D here in parts. Yes, I know, these are pretty much donor engines. I'll just scavenge as many parts as I can get off of that, put them in a box, and the rest of them can be thrown away it'll just go to scrap unfortunately and the same's probably going to be said for this old girl i like to take i'll take the doors off what i got the id plates on them and yeah this one will probably go for you know there's still some salvageable parts on it yeah i mean that looks apart from the apart from the magneto apart from the magneto on the bottom section of the carb it pretty much looks there, but we've got the mag bracket there to go back on it. I could rob the bolts out of that one and put in this one. And, of course, there is some original paint left on that. If anybody's interested in having this engine as it is and saving it, you know, 
come along with you, 40 quid and you can have this engine. Does it turn? It does turn. It's sitting on the flywheel at the minute, but yeah, the engine turns. So if anybody wants this old girl to save it, it actually looks, it's actually got some nice original paint still on there. You know, with an oily rag, that might come up. There you go. Right, this Petter A1, this is going to be a donor for the W1H. It's an alloy plate model. It's a later engine. To be honest, I'm not worried about sacrificing this one to save my W1H here. You're thinking they're totally different engines. No, they're not. All these are is basically a hopper cool head on a Petter A1 bottom end. So, the bits what are missing off that W1H there, namely the carb, we need the carb and the magneto and this fuel tank. And between them, them bits will get this engine going. So, we're using one engine to save another. So, I'm quite happy with that. Right, let's see. Let me just get my little petrol tub, get some petrol in this carb, and see if this thing will actually fire up or not. Right, so let me come round here. Let me take this little bolt out of the top here. Cool. She's there. Alright. I say I'm taking the bloke's word for it. This has got a spark. I haven't tested it, but he said it had and he never could get it running. I wonder if he knew. Cool. Cool, that don't pull up. There you go. Right, this was seized. Now, if he didn't know you had to pull this up as a cold start, that could be why he couldn't start it. That hasn't been lifted for a long time. Right, I'm squeezing petrol in here. Whoops. There we go. We're getting way. We're getting petrol in her. She's filling up. All we're doing here, save putting petrol in here tank what this does is this just fills the carb up directly so saves you shooting two liters of petrol in the tank <clears throat> you can just fill these carbs up direct we have got a tickle yep she's all primed look so I'm gonna see if this thing will start can't see why I wouldn't. That actually looks like a half decent engine. Yes, I know it's a list of D, but looks like a half decent old thing. All right, let's get you back here. While we, I do like, I do like this pulley on here. That is a very nice pulley, big, heavy, solid one. That is a really nice pulley. Has the old girl got comp? Oh yeah, she got compression. Yeah. Do you know, I reckon this might run, guys. But I don't know. Where are we going to come for you? Let's come here. Look, here we go. There we go. Right. Let's get a little crank on this thing. See if it goes. Right. The petrol is switched. What's oh, reverse rotation as well? The petrol is switched off. So let's go open. Half a turn, we'll go all the way open because I'll only open three quarters of a turn because that's got a screw stop in it. So, cool. All right, let me lift that, get, get cranking, lift that cold valve. I say, he said he couldn't get this to go on. No, maybe yes, maybe it does need looking at. Oh, oh, we had a cough. I wonder if we've got a carb problem. Let's turn that fuel down a little. Oh. Hang on. 
I'm just checking the well that throttle was seized as well that throttle was stuck guys that's sticky let's see if she'll do anything now there you go I hate to say it, but what a lovely list to be. Not a single bit of smoke. This throttle was stuck. There you go. Look at her. I've got a nice mag on this. I look like he's had that mag done. Or certainly cleaned it. But the mag looked very good on it. There we go guys, we have a list of D running. Well there you go. Don't run for long because I've only got one car to fetch on. Look at that. This list of D runs. And it runs really well actually. And I do like that pulley, I do like that pulley, that's a bit different. Well look at that. She's still got some original decal, well, some decal on there. This engine is definitely an older restoration, but I reckon with an Audi rack, she'd look all right. Don't she sound nice, guys? Look at that. There we go. And the bloke reckon he couldn't ever start it. Well, with this knoblet here, that cold valve, with that being seized up and the throttle being stuck, it wasn't going to start. Uh, there we are. Ah! Well, don't see you on a treat, look. There you go. There we go. She runs really nice, actually. Really nice. Turn that greaser in there a bit. Well, there you go. She's now going to run out of petrol. Look. She won't run for long because she's only got one carb of petrol. Well, let her die. Finish her business. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, there you go, guys. We have a list of D running, and she's still got a really old plug in it. Look, an old two piece plug. There we are. Marvellous. Well, what can I say, but if anybody wants this list of D here, running, a nice running list of D, let me know. If you come down with about, I don't know, £120, that can be yours. You know, pretty much ready to rally list of D. I would put it on a slightly better trolley than that, but there you go, £120, come and pick it up, running list of D. There we are. If you want spec numbers and spec plates, I haven't cleaned these ones either. You might be able to make them out on there. That's the frosty weather. Here's all your numbers. I don't whether you can make them numbers out. There we go. So there you go. I'll try and hold the camera as steady as I can. There we are. Right. So if anybody wants a nice running list of D, 120 quid, come get it. Absolutely marvellous. So yes, that list of D there. We have this list of D on the trolley, which I believe I've sold already, but we've got to get this one going as well. You know, that's all good. We have a couple of, couple of engines. 
All right, back in the shed and we will do our spark tester. Let me get you set up in the vice. We'll get this little thing to pieces. See if we can right, man, you know, Cable, get it looking. What we're going to do now, we are going to get this little spark plug tester, this little magneto tester. I really like this. You know, finding that little box of that little try of bits. You'd need a hell of a magneto to jump this spark across there. That must be three quarters of a damned inch. Get my finger right in there. Look, hell of a mag to jump across there. You know, you'd need a good mag to jump across this bit. Well, that must be, that must be seven or eight mil across there. Anyhow, I think, get my favourite liquid of choice, the WD-40. I mean, everything turns, but I want to try and get that plug out. Now, I don't know whether that plug unscrew out of there. Something tells me it doesn't, because there's like a gap in here, look. And I think that's some sort of pinch bolt, so you undo this screw, open that up slightly, and I think the plug comes out. I don't want to go twisting on that plug and risk damaging anything. So I think first thing we're going to do is, um, yeah, we're going to try and get that plug out of there. Alright, let's see if this screw here will come undone. Well, look at that. Straight away it came undone. Look at that. Oh, I wonder, now that pinch ball is out, will that have relaxed that enough? Let's get this one out as well. This one might not be so easy. Well, it is, look, would you believe that? This is the one that holds the little gear in. Now, whether there's a spring or a crinkle washer on this, I do not know. Oh, there's some numbers on there. That's not, I didn't see them. Ah, there's meant to be a little doublet. There's holes in the back of this, look, so there's meant to be a little spring-loaded pin in there, I think, which is gone, but not too worried about that, guys. We're not too worried about a little pin. I really want to see now if this plug will come out. Now, let me get in the end of the voice. Uh, let me get a spanner, what will hopefully fit that plug. Right, let's see. Ah, that does unscrew, guys. Undo the pinch bolt. Well, that's a weird plug, isn't it? Look at that. That's like a proper plug with the bottom missing. So this must be a proper thing for that tester. So I think we need to disassemble this. If we can get this plug to bits, I damn well hope we can. Then we can clean the hell out of all of that. So I think that can be our next job. How am I going to hold that? So I don't want to damage that crinkle. Because that's got like that shoulder on there. And I haven't got a shallow enough vice to hold it. Um, all right, let me see if I can get a spanner somehow and rigged up so we can hold this to try and split this plug open. All right, turns out a 22 millimeter is actually closest. None of my Whitworths will do it. So I'm going to try and hold. Hang on, I know, I know what we can do. I reckon I might be able to put... Will that go through there? Not quite. It'll go in the open end, look. That has a nice snug fit in the open end. Right, we'll use the open end. And I've got a spanner what fit the outer bit. We'll see if this plug will crack open. Oh, it does look. Look at that. I was expecting it to be a lot more seized. We have got to be so careful with this because I do not want to break any of this. So we're going to put this with kid gloves. We're going to put that in a little drawer on a paper bag so it can't roll anywhere. All right, now we've got the mission. 
we've now got the mission of cleaning these bits up which I'm going to do I believe in my wire wheel on my angle grinder bench grinder sorry not angle grinder right guys so with our bench grinder set up let's turn him on and let's see if we can get these bits cleaned up a bit guys I do love a bench grinder, they are brilliant tools. This could take a couple of minutes. Let's clean all these threads up. Look how that's cleaned up. Unbelievable, isn't it? There we go. If we can get all of this, if we can get all this machine to clean up like that, I'll be a very happy bunny. And for those of you that are complaining, I don't have a guard on this grinder I'll explain why I used to have the guard what goes around these but on a wire wheel I found them to be honest with you bloody dangerous because I used to have the guard like on this side I had the proper guard with the little shelf the amount of times I was cleaning something the grinder would pick it up on that wire wheel throw it round that would come out and hit you in the balls you know and I thought no you're better off you know because if it snatch out of your hand now it just really fall to the floor but when it got nowhere to go and that get flung round that come out waist tight hit you straight in your bits and guys that's not ideal so that's why I do not hang on there's a spring in there, I just noticed look. There you go. That is why I do not have the guard on. Plus, the guard is very much in the way. Oh, this is super. And this is a brass wheel, not a steel one as well. So this is very gentle on metal. You can even do aluminium on this and it don't scratch the aluminium, that's really good. You know, I was going to paint this thing, but I don't think I'm going to paint it. I had ideas of spraying this thing black. I'm not sure that that's the right thing to do. No, I'm really not sure painting this thing is the right thing to do. This is coming up really well. Now I just need the little toothed wheel, don't I? Where did that toothed wheel go? Couldn't find the little toothed wheel for a second, but we've found it now. There we go. Look at that. Oh, look at that coming up. 
Lovely. Let's clean the tips up. Gently so we don't risk bending them over. winding down I'm going to go back to the crossley but I want your vote on the crossley I'll drop a picture of the crossley in here in case you haven't watched the video do I leave that crossley as it is just get it run and leave it as it is or do I paint it up and get it looking really nice I had it in my head that I wanted to strip that thing right down give it a proper nice coat of paint get it looking like new or do i just get it running and leave it like it is i'm gonna put this to a vote and leave that totally up to you guys so the highest vote is what we'll go for so crossly leave original or get it looking like new when you consider what the engine looks like inside what its internals are like not having much sort of you know i don't think it's had too much use to be honest so let me know what you think all right let me put the grinder away and we'll be back with this so here we are we are back with our little spark plug tester now then i think there's a dimple i think there's a little tiny ball bearing missing of course this spring goes in there and i reckon there's meant to be a little ball bearing sit on the top what pushes against these knobs so you can lock it in place sadly that little ball bearings missing and i don't have any in fact i know i don't have any ball bearings so we're going to put the spring in and when i do get a ball bearing i will put one in it so let's get this thing back together and see how it goes So guys, let's get our little thing here back together. Lovely. Want the numbers on the outside. Like I said, when I get a little ball bearing, I will put the ball bearing back in. But I know I don't have any little BBs at the minute. But we will get it in there. But for now, we want to just tighten this down. I've centralised itself. That just want a little nip. Oh, you can tighten that fully down and that, that actually holds itself quite nicely. Alright, let's get the plug reassembled and then get the whole thing back together. Alright, first of all we just want to clean this insulator up a bit. So how I'm going to do that is with a little bit of chemical spray and a little bit of very, very used wire wool. So there isn't a lot of abrasion to this wire wool at all because it's a very used bit, a very dirty bit. But it will just give us the littlest bit of, it will give us the smallest bit of um, 
abrasion and hopefully bring this insulator up literally like brand new there we are let's give her a spray off oh look at that look at that guys yep yeah. that is literally came up like brand new and there isn't even there isn't even a plug number on that look so this isn't just a plug been barged in it just says champion england there are no numbers on this so this is specifically for the spring i wonder was this actually a champion you know item was this an item that was manufactured by champion i couldn't tell you so to be honest with you i've never seen one of them before right where was that 22 mil spanner that was here one up so we want to put this spanner back in our vice put our plug yeah oh come on Ben, think right that comes there doesn't it there you go put our plug back together like so Remember what I said about these? Just give them a little twist to centralise them before you nip these up. If not, you can easily crack that porcelain. So let me get my plug back in its contraption. And then we can get that Whitworth spanner, which fitted on there. I'm giving that a light nip. There we are. Here it is our uh, spark plug excuse my dirty hands let me get a rag on that give that plug a wipe up there we go she has literally come up like new so let's get this thing assembled so we've got that one in and then this just comes in this side doesn't it There we go. I have not got that plug centered up, look. This is what I mean by trying to center them plugs up. That is not right. But what is right enough is... What is right enough is we can put the plug in. Then I can crack off this again. There we are. Get off there, bud. There you go. We can center this plug up. There we go. That centered that plug up. And we can just nip that up. There we go. That don't need to be massively tight. It just needs nipping up. And there we go, guys my fingerprints off there here we are our little spark tester is restored and finished look at that i was going to paint this you know i was going to spray it matte black i'm actually liking the original look so i don't think i am going to paint this black although it was black originally I don't think I'm going to paint it black. I think we're going to leave it just as it is. I think that looks nice in its raw state. There we go. Don't like that screw head there. I want to back it off a bit so it's parallel. I know. Same with this one. That wants to be parallel. There we are. Screws are parallel. Perfect. So here we go guys, here is our little spark tester. So we can test a magneto if we ever need to, which we will, because on the bench beside it, just out of shot over there, is the magneto off that crossley. So there we go guys, really a three in one video, you've seen a couple more engines and another list of D that's ready to go to a new home if anyone wants it. We've restored this little thing. 
back to its former glory. That's a really nice machine. And you've had your opinion on the Crossley. And if you want refreshing how bad the Crossley is, here's the magneto and back engine cover off it. This was say. So, do we leave this engine where basically the whole thing looks like this? Do we leave it out and just get it going? Or do we give this a really nice paint job? And I don't mean a lick over with a brush. I mean back to bare metal and, you know, a proper, probably even a respray. You know, really nice. Do we get this engine really nice or leave it in its working clothes looking like that? I don't know if it's good enough. But we'll see. I'll leave it up to you guys. Right. Well, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Ah, nice refreshing beverage. So, yes, I'm going in. Have some tea with Mrs. Man Cave. It is, what, 25 to 7 now. And starting to get dark outside, and the old belly is starting to rumble. So there you go. I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget, the raffle's being drawn Saturday morning for the charity listed. Bye bye for now, guys. I do like this little thing. Ha! <laughs> oh my love.